Intentional families is the if every parent wishes they had. If I had the tools, if I understood the Bible, if I knew what to say, if I knew what to do, I could help my kids and I could raise them spiritually. Well, you can, and that's why we're here. I'm Kate Richter. And I'm Josh Richter. With Intentional Families and Root Family Bible. Welcome to episode 10, The Father's Favorite. Welcome to Intentional Families. We're so glad you are joining us here again today. And I'm really excited about today's topic, about the father's favorite, because the, I don't know about you, I think everyone growing up feels like they had a father who had favorites at some point, mm -hmm. right? Or a, parent, or a parent, rather. A parent that preferred mm -hmm. one um, family member over another, mm -hmm. or one son or one daughter. Yes. Yes. Uh, because I don't think the enemy is unique in that. And in whispering those lies. In Root Family Bible, we can even see that. We've been talking about the life of Joseph and about how the dad's favorite was Rachel, was that mom, because he had four wives, which just sounds like a little bit of insanity to me <laughs> in <man>. the house. <laughs> the, the man that usually likes peace and quiet and then marries four girls. I don't know how that works. Anyway, that's off topic. So... He, his favorite was Rachel, and then because of that, then Joseph was the favorite, and then we can talk about blended families from there, or, you know, his brothers hated him because of that, and then he got mm -hmm. special gifts, which made them special hate him treatment. even more. Mm -hmm. And then you can even look at how Joseph, he, all his brothers were in the field working, except for Joseph. Yeah, you, there know, were, you know, if we were going to go into parenting do's and don'ts, uh, <laughs> Jacob really laid some out for us, you know, yeah. but, but, you know, I really want to start this podcast in that it is fun to study this story mm -hmm. and um, we can learn so much from it. But the reason we called this episode what we did is because how um, Joseph was to Jacob, how precious, how important, how um, singled out is actually, I think, a depiction of how the Father God sees us today through Christ. And so mm -hmm. the reason we can go after this and learn this without it um, taking us down a path of, oh, my sister is my mom's favorite or my brother is my dad's favorite, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, or that God would prefer someone over you or me, is that we can look at that now in the New Testament through Christ that I am his precious one. I am his most favorite. I am the one that he died for that, He's given abundant life that he cares for, that he's mm -hmm. given gifts, that he wants to desire to prophesy and speak his word, the one he wants to give dreams, right? All of those promises in the word that apply to me and you and you listening or watching yeah. um, now makes us like Joseph was to Jacob. Mm -hmm. You know, just he's just waiting to place his cloak of anointing on us and, and lavish us with gifts as the loving father. And, and as we go into study about uh, Jacob, we can look at it from the side of, and, and Joseph, the side of we are now the father's favorite, and that is us. And yeah. and in the New Testament, I mean, can you just can you just take a moment and be in? I think a lot of times we read this story and we're the angry brothers. Like <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but sometimes yeah. we're like, ah, oh, there's yeah. people in our lives that we feel like have more favor than us or more attention or, you know, and you sometimes read it like, I mean, that's a little extreme. I'm not going to throw them in a pit, but <laughs> it is not fair, <laughs> right? And um, we can read this story just fully from um, Jacob's perspective or the father's perspective of Joseph or from being Joseph in the father's eyes. Mm -hmm. So. I just, I just want to encourage people in that as we go into this study. And you can encourage your kids in that as we start to talk a little bit about yep. jealousy and favoritism in our families. Mm -hmm. um, that um, if we take God off the throne, then those things um, become king, right? Who's right. first? Who does the best? Who whatever? But as soon as we put God back on the throne, we realize that everything is in good timing and the gifts are spread between his children the way he's desired and because mm -hmm. he loves us so much. So as we go into this, because I know jealousy and envy and strife can be real things in families and really mm -hmm. just tear them apart even as you get into adulthood. Yeah. And so we really just want to go after that real subject in this mm -hmm. podcast today mm -hmm. uh, while we have time. One of the things I think is so fun is to, when you're talking about Joseph being the favorite and that's kind of how God wants us to feel in our relationship with him. Yeah. Uh, I think 
every child wants to be the favorite. They want to be the one that's singled out special. Yeah. And I think if we can point them to that, they already have that kind of relationship with God the Father and not within the home, not be, because within the home it's causing problems. If we're all God's favorite, we're in the home working together as a unit to see what God has for this family unit to accomplish. Uh, that brings tremendous strength and security in each one of their ki- each one of the kids, and even for ourselves as parents, knowing that hey, we are God's favorite, and He has positioned us according to the gifts that He's given us mm-hmm. for a specific plan that only we could accomplish. And He's up there, uh, not with a lightning bolt, like waiting for us to mess up, but He's just up there, almost giddy, looking at us and how we are uh, striving to accomplish His plan down here. How our efforts are for his kingdom, mm-hmm. not to earn his love because he already loves us so much, but rather our efforts because are because of, of his yeah. love. So I'm going to pause because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> your microphone's like poking into your skin. <laughs> well, now it looks like I have this black stick really sticking well, into my the neck. other side, but it was like, I wonder if we even hear, well, here on the podcast, <laughs> if it's like <laughs> reverberating or something in your neck. How about that? I don't know. <laughs> it's the same to me. Okay. We'll see if it makes a so, difference. Now that we know where our favorites, uh, real things around the table. Real and things I'm not with being your impaled. Kids. And you're not being impaled by your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? Uh, uh, <laughs> we can talk uh, about. We can talk about real things like microphone joking. acupuncture. Stop it! Joking with your kids. <laughs> Breathe. Okay. Joking with your kids about, well, I'm God's favorite and I'm God's favorite. And you'd be like, yeah. oh, wait, you're right. You are God's favorite. And so am I. You know, just mm-hmm. being able to make lighthearted of situations where, um, and you can even turn them and do it with you. Well, sorry. You know, I can say, sorry, Wyatt Winston's my favorite. But wait, so are you. You're both my favorite. You know, we tease them all the time like that. You're my favorite five-year-old. You're my favorite eight-year-old. Mm-hmm. You're right in that. Um, because God loves us that way, he says we can love that way. Yep. And so we never have to question which child is our favorite because we have the ability to love like God does. And, and they the never op- have to question. It gives you the opportunity to call out the giftings and the potentials and just the, the talents your own kids have. And you can pull those out. Hey, you're my favorite at sports right. because God has gifted you that. You're my favorite uh, at art. Because you can draw things that actually look like an animal and mine look like trees or whatever, yeah. you know, and you can, you but can, being, I mean, being able to pull out their gifts, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we say favorite for fun because we do honestly believe and speak mm-hmm. that we are God's favorite and there's nothing that sets us apart from his love, which means there's nothing I can do to mess it up, which is, means there's nothing I can do to make him love us, mm-hmm. me less or more which yeah. means i could never be less or more than any other person that is his child any other human being right yeah and if you think about it even joseph's love that he had with his father wasn't based on him right. or even his own actions what he was accomplishing it was all because of this relationship that he had with his his with, with rachel, rachel. Earning and, her through all of and his I think years you know what I, now that we're talking about it, this just hit me that it probably could be looked at the same way as you know Jesus, Jesus exactly. and God and yeah. our our favoriteness with God has nothing to do with <laughs> what's the word I don't know favorite whatever <laughs> check favoriteness <laughs> what's the word then that's favoritism. Uh, favorite our Which favor one? our favor, our favor. <laughs> we'll just shorten it to favor our favor with god is not based on us or our action once we've once we've received jesus our favor with god is based on yes. him and, and why it's unchanging exactly and then we can walk in <laughs> the fullness Jesus. of our Wait, favoriteness <laughs> okay so let's walk out favoredness <laughs> Favoriteness, the new word. You'll time. find it in Webster soon. <laughs> so if your kids are registered in Root Family Bible, they are learning about Joseph uh, this week. That and probably won't be a vocab word. And then favoredness. Was that it? 
favorite will not anyway. put favoriteness on their vocabulary in Root Family Bible. <laughs> but if you are not, we just want to update you on that. That's what they're studying is the power of one and different uh, people from the Bible and how they were used mm -hmm. by God. So um, that's why we're talking about Joseph. So one thing we can really attack in a family when... And when reading this, and I encourage you even as parents to go out and read this in Genesis, read the account of Joseph, whether or not your kids are en route to help them, you know, walk through this as a parent. Mm -hmm. Why are we talking about favor favoritism? <laughs> why are we talking about favoritism? Why are we talking about jealousy? Why are these real things? Well, you can read in the account of Joseph yeah. how powerful uh, both of those things are and they can be used for good and they can be used for harm yep. And so I really liked this one statement as we go in to talk about jealousy in Wait, particular. let me finish. Oh, no finish with this Did you what? the Story in about Joseph starts in Genesis chapter 36 Seven. Oh, yeah, 37 well. is where you have his dreams but if you're going to sit down and read this with your family, I really encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you some ideas of things that you can pull out of that with your kids because God has ordained you. He's made you to be the spiritual leader of your home. And so he wants you to be able to teach your kids things that no one else will be able to. No one else no. will be able to grasp that or help them grasp it because we haven't been built in that position. You're the parent, you're the spiritual leader. And so ask for it and then expect the Holy Spirit to give you those things. He's right. the great teacher. So as you, you go through this, you you're going to find all kinds of themes or subjects that you can pull out and talk to your family to reinforce God's will, God's love, uh, holiness, whatever it might be. So it basically in my Bible, I just thought this was a good jump out. Perseverance would be good. <laughs> Interruptions, interrupting. Interrupting <laughs> cow. Mm. Okay. I was about to say moo. And I said, mm. okay. Um, <laughs> That's a lazy, interrupting lazy cow. So you could really just, uh, are you struggling? Just stop in all of our silliness and ask yourself, are your kids struggling with jealousy? Are your kids struggling with um, what could be developing into envy, right? Because of jealousy. Is there anything like that floating around? It doesn't have to be dealt with. And sometimes... We like to coin it off as silliness, and I remember... Or they're just emotional. Or emotional. We can pawn it off as that. they're young, or like at the one night I had about a year ago, I put my youngest to bed, and um, I can't even remember what happened that day, but so yeah, our oldest was really highlighted in one of his activities, and so dad was just tickling him and playing with him and being silly, and which he does with both boys, mm -hmm. and I'm over with our youngest, and I'm tucking him in, and he just looks at me with these genuine eyes and, and says, I wish I were Wyatt. And I just remember being so caught off guard, like, where did this even come from? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like he was sad during the day, when, but I got just a, a glimpse into what could be going on in his mind. And at that moment, I'm tired and I want to go to bed and mm -hmm. I think, but I'm also shocked and I think, Holy Spirit, help me answer this mm -hmm. you know and so first I started with questions and asked him why and I won't drone on about that but I just want to I want to bring that to your attention because we sometimes don't recognize it or know it mm -hmm. that it's really going on in there until we're open to having the conversation open to seeing it you know and um really pursuing the emotions and and thoughts that are going on in our kids minds mm -hmm. now Thankfully, at that time, he shared it without me probing too much, right. you know, but um, it really shocked me because I would have I would have never thought that before that moment. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to sit and ask questions why and come up with the answer of um, what how God makes us all individual and special. And if we spend our life wanting to be someone else, we'll never be able to walk right. out what he's called us to do. And that exactly. was essentially what the evening ended with. Yeah. But it allowed us to turn our attention to, we have to make sure that they understand how unique and special they are individually. And as a part of our family and individually, how that is glorified in heaven as we do it for him. That we don't focus mm -hmm. on each other because, you know, as soon as you turn your focus on someone else, it's for you, right? You're not turning your focus on someone else like, I wish I could do that for God. And even if you say that, <laughs> let's just be real, 
It's not for that, right? You're so never I want to do that for God for myself. everyone else to see that right. I was doing that for God. Right. Or I would feel so amazing if, if I was doing that for God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we know that jealousy is not rooted yeah. in glorifying the king or his kingdom or putting it first. So mm -hmm. that was my experience with him and really gave us a light into we got to make sure that that we're hot now okay let me back try because i also think we have a generation where we can't just tell them they're wonderful and amazing all the mm -hmm. time without expectations of good of walking out their righteousness and salvation right you know oh you're so amazing all the time with zero consequences because i do feel mm -hmm. like we have a bit of a twisted society where it's like you have to always build people up in in how amazing they are and these big dreams you know they're ahead of them outside of of explaining that you know god is big and mm -hmm. what you do that he asks you to is big because of your obedience regardless of the world the weight put of, on that right, item right. it could be you know you're gonna be a garbage man and that's god's plan for your life to be the best garbage man and you're going to witness to people on the job that would never hear about Jesus and wouldn't go to church or whatever many, it might be. But how many but, of you are so like mm -hmm. trained in society today when he said that you almost went like, what? You know what I mean? Because it's like garbage, man. You know, mm -hmm. like we're literally taught in society today to like only expect to be superstars. Right. Only a CEO of a company is the one that God will use. Right. The best singer, the mm -hmm. best actor, the best sports person, the best, right? Stay at home mom for that matter. The You have to be top of your game. The number one on Pinterest, the biggest store on Etsy, right? Mm -hmm. That's just our society. And somewhere along the way, we've lost uh, just being the, the part of the body God's asked us to be mm -hmm. and being content there to do that the best that we yep. can. And so... I it's just my want to elbow because I, I just want to make sure that we're encouraging our kids in what God wants them to be, not to be, you know, uh, super in this world mm -hmm. because it's super to be super. My elbow does not get more amazing if it also tries to be my fingers, <laughs> you know, in <laughs> the more time like, like the body of Christ. An elbow is amazing the, and does the best for the body when it stays in its position. If my elbow is at my fingers or my shoulder is over here on my body, we're in serious problems. Well, you know? <laughs> and again, it goes back to why, why do you want to do that thing? What is stirring in you to want to do that? You know, when we focus on what's your passion, what's your dream, just make sure that's in check with the king. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have passions. It's okay to have dreams. But you know what? I've had a lot of wrong or outside of my righteousness, passions, and dreams. Mm -hmm. If it, we're all going to be real, mm -hmm. there are things that I really wanted to do that I shouldn't have wanted to do. Well, even go, let's go back to Joseph for a second. Right. Joseph was in the perfect plan of God, trying to do what and being obedient to follow God and all these things. And then he gets thrown in the pit by his brothers. He gets sold as a slave. Then he excels in that house because he's given everything to God. God's blessing is on him. And then he gets thrown in jail because he was accused of something he didn't even do. And he chose to be upright and, and was resist that temptation, which would probably would have been easier just to give in, right? Yeah. And then, but he resists that. And he stays holy and he stays steadfast. As in he, and he gets in trouble for these things. And he has a tough life. Up until, you know, he goes and he's then one under the Pharaoh, the top ruler of the whole known world at that time. But gotcha. without those other steps, he wouldn't have been a, in the right position to step into that big thing for God. And so his steps to big thing was what everyone else would say. What in the world are you doing? Why are you there? You need to check yourself. You are missing God somehow because there's no way you would be going through a, that rough time in your life yeah. if you yeah. were really following God. Yeah. Or, or, or maybe so, you've, you've stepped outside of God's grace and now you, you've just got something going on. That you're in the enemy's territory because look at all these bad things going on in your life. And, you know, we've watching, all you can see got advice or heard of advice like that. And yet that's what would be said to Joseph. And here he is actually in the perfect plan of God to be able to rescue thousands, hundreds of thousands of people from certain death and be able to ex exhibit 
the goodness of God to a whole country as one step under Pharaoh as a godly man. Oh my word, that's just amazing. So before we hop back into jealousy, I just want you to take a moment and think about the people in the Bible that God has used. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And how many of them, if they were in today's Christian church, would be told by people that know no better in your church <laughs> that you have stepped out outside of the will of God mm -hmm. and you're in the enemy's territory or those that choose to backbite in and whisper behind backs would mm -hmm. be saying, oh my gosh, did you hear about Joseph? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is so not in the favor of God. Or what did he do? Or he must have mm -hmm. done something to upset God. Right. Can, well, can even, we just be real? But can you think yeah. of one person that God used in the Bible that today, honestly, would not have been seen by those people that don't know who they are in Christ really, are in church, playing church, would not mm -hmm. have said of these people in the Bible, oh my, they're so outside of the will of God, or they must have done <laughs> right. something wrong. Right. There's not one person I can think of used by God in the Bible that wouldn't have been judged by, by the standard that we've decided mm -hmm. today is God. I right? almost said David. Goes wrong. I almost said David because he was celebrated as a young man and yep. as an old man, but nope. he had a wilderness time where he yep. was even living within the Philistines, their enemies, mm -hmm. hiding from King Saul and, and had a warrior... The warriors would come to them and they'd go defeat other cities. And then the king of the Philistines would come to him like, where'd you go raiding? And then David would end up lying to cover his tracks that he <laughs> like, that's not exactly a great time. No, not to mention he's hiding in caves. The king wants mm -hmm. to kill him. People would be like, look, uh, he, he can't be God's favorite. Look at this. He's yeah. in caves hiding. The king wants to kill him. You know, King Saul, head and shoulders above everyone else, favored mm -hmm. all the time. Right, everyone would decide that, yeah, he's not God's guy, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And that would be post killing the giant and all that, of course, because mm -hmm. people forget so quickly, don't they? Yeah. Right? When they want to judge a situation mm -hmm. rather than keep God at the center mm -hmm. of what they see. So, well, even, wait, let me do one last thing. And, <laughs> We're getting so, so much even, track here. <laughs> but you even raise David's kids with family, thinking, you David's know? family, when Saul went to go ordain one of them as kings, he mm -hmm. went a number, and it says in the Bible even that Saul, or Samuel was really impressed with uh, some of David's brothers, and God even had to tell Sa uh, Samuel, "Hey, um, you see on the outside, but God sees the character on the inside, yeah. and these are not it." They had, they had everything on the outside and the natural that people would applaud and be like, oh yeah, look at that, that's fantastic. Yet the guy that was out um, almost banished to the fields the doing the worst job yeah. in, uh, at that time, yeah. being a shepherd is the worst job of anything that you can do. And that's the one that God had picked and positioned there to be able to become the person God wanted him to be. So I think, honestly, I just think the Holy Spirit is taking this podcast and making it what he wants. Because if we don't first focus on what standard we're setting for our kids, mm -hmm. what standard are we looking at their successes with mm -hmm. even in our own eyes as mm -hmm. parents, right? Because it is so easy. It is so easy to be tainted by the world and start to look at, you mm -hmm. know, success as a, a rank, right? Yeah. And how in reflection of what the world considers success. Mm -hmm. And it, if we're not careful, we'll raise our kids to see success yeah. that way. We'll raise our kids to see even our successes as parents and in of themselves and in God that way. So we just need to back up and go, mm -hmm. wait a minute, is this a success or isn't it in God's eyes? Yeah. Is this a victory or isn't it in God's eyes, right? right. And remember that we are his favorite because of what Jesus did. And so that there's nothing we can do wrong, so wrong that makes him love us less or more. Nothing we can do so good that would mm -hmm. make him love us more, right? And the same went with David. You know, mm -hmm. if we looked out in the natural, you brought up Which David. we're going to talk to about him in a We are going to talk about, yeah. you know, there's a lot in his life we go, there's no way in the natural he was his favorite. But it was mm -hmm. because he saw after God's kingdom first. Yeah. So remember, God is not asking you or your kids to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. He's only yeah. asked you to put his kingdom first. Yep. Because perfection, if he wanted that, he wouldn't have sent Christ. 
right? right? If he needed us to be perfect, he would have kept with the law and said, you keep trying, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But he sent Christ because he knew we weren't perfect, but he wanted us to be able to be right with him mm -hmm. so we could put his kingdom first and receive his promises. Yeah. And the same goes for your children, mm -hmm. right? Wait, they let's are talk not about... supposed to be perfect. Yeah, let's talk about this because children, um, let's talk about, let's pull the story of Joseph into our times and let's, let's even say, okay, now you're Jacob. Now, thankfully, a lot of us still have kids within the home. They're not, no, our, the brothers haven't come and said, your, your child is dead and wild animals <sighs> killed him or whatever. I can't imagine that. But <sighs> let's say you see Jacob hears that Joseph is a slave in Potiphar's house or worse, you know, or worse, he's in the dungeons or, you know, all these different really horrible things that he went through. As parents, we would do anything to rescue him out of those situations, right? right, right. And here instead, it was actually God's perfect plan for him to be in those situations. I wonder how many times we can uh, almost require our kids to go through extra hard times because we swoop in and rescue them out of the things that God is walking them into to develop their character, to develop their, uh, their integrity, to you know, really strengthen their perseverance and their endurance. But instead, we swoop in as the, the mighty parents and we rescue them out of this horrible situation, only requiring them to go through it again so that those cult uh, culture, those character issues can be solidified in them so that our kids can be the kind of people that God can use in big ways. Right. That was the, one of our verses that we went over in. Oh, yeah. And that was a that. powerful verse because, you know, if you don't have resistance, your muscles won't get stronger. Mm -hmm. And everything in the natural has a counter in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Everything in the spiritual has a counter in the natural, I should mm -hmm. say, because that came first. So verses Romans 5, 3, it says this, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. The, pro the words for problems and trials in, uh, in the Greek here is actually like weights being added, pressure being added uh, upon something. And so it's like, um, if like, well, the way we taught it with the kids was if you're going to do push-ups and then you have somebody put a five pound weight on your back or a 10 pound or worse yet, your kid sits on you while you're trying to do a push-up. All this weight is added to you, but it's good because then it helps you develop endurance. It develops those muscles to be able to push back against those pressures and become a stronger person in the end. So we always ask, what can we learn from this and how does it make us stronger in mm -hmm. him? And we ask that of the Lord, mm -hmm. right? So uh, a mistake is, you know, we always say these cliches that the world says, you know, you don't fail, you fail up or what, you know what fail I mean? Fail forward. All that, right, and, but then yeah. when it comes down to it, do we really believe it? So let's take all that aside and take mm -hmm. the gospel and say, endurance is built by learning from our mistakes. That's the bottom line. When the mm -hmm. pressure is put on or when there's more than we think we can handle, it just makes us need him more. Mm -hmm. And we ask, how do we lean on you more? How do we learn how to walk with you more? As we put your kingdom first, did we not do it there? Mm -hmm. Show us, right? And it's just constantly turning to him and and that's how we remain growing and, and, and getting stronger. And that's how our kids yeah. do also, not by us fixing their problems, yeah. right? So yeah. we don't want Definitely. to save them we... and save them. We want to talk through gospel. We want to mm -hmm. make sure that we're pointing them to Christ, but we want to help them be problem solvers with the spirit. We talked about that a couple mm -hmm. episodes ago, right? But we're going to get back to jealousy. <laughs> Can I get back to jealousy yes. super quick? Okay, yes, so in we got to do it. Because I feel like this has got to be dealt with, mm -hmm. okay? If mm -hmm. within your family, kids are over competitive with each other, not in a healthy way, not in an encouraging to pull further, like run the race to win kind mm -hmm. of gospel things. Mm -hmm. If they're over competitive and sensing that you're sensing that one, you know, is starting to be jealous or envious mm -hmm. of the other's gifts or their attention. Yeah, or, and I'd say typically it's one of the tactics the devil uses in the younger kids because it's just normal life that the the oldest kid is going to be the first one who will be able to uh, mow the lawn, the first one to be able to ride a bike, the first one that's going to be able to go on a missions trip or now, whatever. But I'm going and, to put in there, 
Uh, not always. Because, not always. I'm saying Because typically. the older will look and say, well, I wish I didn't have to empty the dishwasher and they had to. <laughs> I wish, right? There's always going. So yeah. so uh, in the flesh, there's, and let's be real, as parents, we've got to lead the way in this. Mm -hmm. If there are things we wish we had better that someone else mm -hmm. has that we're not finding that we can celebrate other people's victories, mm -hmm. these are things we've got to bring to the Lord. Yep. And I love the Side way. Side note. Side note. <laughs> I'm sorry, we just, I just got to share this because I've had that thought. We are out of time oh, and we have not even right. talked about jealousy. I know, is Yo. this, if you celebrate the oldest when they, it's their time to be able to get to, uh, let's say, play soccer for the first time, they're finally old enough to do it, you also need to celebrate with that same intensity and passion when the younger kids be able to do it. Otherwise, it feels like to them then you really are playing favorites. Even though you're not, it's just that, it's not, it's, it's funny to celebrate soccer because we've been doing it as a family for two years or whatever it would be. You still got to celebrate it because it's that child's first time being able to do it. All right. And back to you. Here we go. Um, let's see. Have you ever been so jealous that you felt like you could hurt somebody, right? That's talking about the story of Joseph. I don't think I've ever been there. I don't think, I guess maybe emotionally where I'd want to hurt them emotionally in the <laughs> flesh. You know what I mean? Where you think oh, I could just say things to cut them down. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I would, I would, if I'm being real, just confessing, I would say maybe, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So okay. it says, have you ever been there? Uh, 10 men were so jealous. They were willing to kill their youngest brother. Their deep, deep jealousy had grown into ugly rage, blinding them completely to what was right. Jealousy can be hard to recognize because our reasons for it seem to make sense. But left unchecked, jealousy grows quickly and leads to serious sins. The longer you cultivate jealous feelings, the harder it is to uproot them. Mm, that last yeah. line is good. That's from your study Bible. So that's, yeah. she's not reading from scripture verses. Just in case some of you are like, where is that verse? No, that's pulling it's, out of, you know, when you read about Joseph's life in chapter mm -hmm. 37, uh, 19 through 20, just how the brothers were just letting that jealousy mm -hmm. build up. Yeah, and, go unchecked. You know, and the then oldest even, brother didn't struggle with it as bad. Yeah, Reuben freaked their, out at their actions. Reading. But yeah. even that, uh, I think they used each other to build it up even more. Have you ever been in one mm -hmm. of those conversations where it's, like a, it's a minor mentality. thing and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, but that, oh yeah, and this and this, and now all of a sudden it's like, ah, yeah. everybody's like freaking out and it was really something minor. And when, if you were, get back to your rational self, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we just did that. We, But parents, we do that, right? It's not only about jealousy, but it's a little thing going wrong, little thing going wrong, little thing going wrong, little thing. And then our kid comes up and says, hey, can, can I have a glass of water? And you're like, yes. And they come back and, ha hey, can I have a glass of water? Oh my gosh, what did I do? Oh, not, not saying that you do that. I'm just saying we- Because it's left unchecked, yes. right? You didn't take a moment and go, oh Lord, I give my frustration yep. to you today. You just today. let it Help build me, up I in you. I feel tired, right. Instead of casting your cares on him because he cares for you, you just keep those cares until boom, it And this goes back to intentional parenting. Mm -hmm. The first time that you see it is the time to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you didn't then, then now's the time, Yep. right? And it doesn't mean you are telling them what to think or do. It means you're bringing up real discussion of what this looks mm -hmm. like. What does a jealous life look like? There's actually many examples of a jealous life in the Bible mm -hmm. and how it does not produce the fruit that you want. <laughs> and so as a family, these are real things to deal with and that we can't properly celebrate each other and grow together as a family unless we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I can tell you so many adult families right now that live apart and don't love each other well because of jealousy. Hmm. I can, it's I, crazy I mean, to me. We know them personally. Yeah. Yeah. People that are living that way and we're just like, what? You know, so if you don't want that for your kids, if you don't want that for your families, mm -hmm. if you don't want that for your married children when they go on, mm -hmm. it's now so that it doesn't take root. Yeah, teach them how to deal with it now at a young right. age so that you can have those sweet relationships when they're older. And yeah. how do you deal with that? You know that God thinks you are his favorite. And what he picks out for you as you keep his kingdom first is what he has for you. And anytime you look onto someone else's gift mm -hmm. um, in jealousy or envy, you are saying, God, I don't trust you and how you made me and I want that. 
And that is not keeping God in kingdom first. Now listen, that's not going to make him love you less. That it, okay, let's make mm-hmm. sure that nobody's mm-hmm. hearing me say that. But it is the reality of us taking him off the throne and going, maybe I could do this better. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And that is not where we want to be. That's not how we want to raise our kids to be. You're laughing at me. <laughs> I'm not laughing. You start time. You, that's not saying God makes you step off into. And then I heard my head, danger zone. <laughs> That's true. Da, da, Jealousy. Da, danger zone. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, I know you so, all are jealous of my singing so abilities right If you're going to talk to your kids about Joseph <laughs> this month as a family, this is our statement we've come up with to talk about is you don't mm-hmm. want to be a Joe bro, you want to be a go bro, yep. which means you don't want to be one of Joseph's jealous brothers. That's a mm-hmm. Joe bro. Don't be a Joe bro, be a go bro. A go bro is going to encourage and build up it, their brothers and sisters in Christ in the gifts and talents God's yep. given them. And I personally want to be a go bro because I know they're going to go out of their way to encourage and build up others. Right. I know the body of Christ is going to go farther together when I can celebrate every part and the gifts and the Mm -hmm. callings on those parts lives. I'm not going to hinder myself from growing because I choose to celebrate them as well. We're all part of one body. Let's keep that focus. It's not about me. It's not about you. (laughs) It's really not. It's about him and how he uses us all for the glory of his kingdom. That was a really long podcast. I'm so sorry. Find contentment in your place because your place is the best place for you to be. And it will grow the kingdom and our king will come back and we can move into this eternal Mm -hmm. (laughs) victory. Let's get there, people. Mm -hmm. Now remember, if you have any questions, if you want to make comments, we love that. You could email us. You can leave comments on the video or the podcast. We'd love to read comments and respond to them. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate a positive rating if you are enjoying this podcast yeah, that would be amazing or if it's helping you and your parenting please put a rating on or, or subscribe share it or sh- yeah or subscribe or share it That's subscribe or share really it <laughs> we love our we subscribers seriously <laughs> really means a lot to us <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we love you all. If you're watching the video, thank you for watching. If you're yes. listening, thank you for listening. Thank you for enduring. God bless you and your... And America. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I am so done. God bless you and your pursuit of your intentional family. Okay, that's it. We're done. Goodbye. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed the content that you've been learning today through Intentional Families, sign up at rootfamilybible.com for our next classes. That's where we take this content and we make it easy to understand for kids. We have great online classes that teach them these same things. And we give you as the parent a ton of tools to be able to make this a lifestyle at home. That's right, because we don't only want to reach the kids, we want to reach the family. So we hope to see you there.